Lingua Latina tutorials with Mr. K. This is Pensum D. This video is meant to accompany the Latine Disco or the Lingua Latina College Companion texts, both available from Focus Bookstore. Let's get right into the text. I'll point out a few new features in Chapter 9. If you look at line 3 of Chapter 9, we see the word Owis, okay, which is a new form. You haven't seen a word with the ending is uh, so far. And uh, this belongs to a new declension called the third declension. Now the third declension, we see the declension of the third declension in the margin here with owis, owem, owis, owi, owe, and the plural owis, owis, owiem, owibus, owibus. Now one um the case number and gender of owis here in the third line is uh, feminine, well it's a uh, nominative and it is uh, singular and it is feminine. And we'll notice as you look at other words in the third declension that you're going to see all three genders represented, masculine, feminine, and neuter. So you need to pay close attention to the adjectives that go with this, with the noun. So if you notice next to owis we have una Nigra, one black sheep. So this um, una nigra, we know from our, our previous chapters that this is feminine. And so when it goes with owis, we know that owis is also feminine. If you look at the next line, pastor, okay, we haven't seen this ending before either, pastor, the R ending. Uh, pastor is also a third declension noun, but it is um, masculine okay, rather than feminine. And so here we have the pastor, the shepherd, has one black sheep. Here we have the accusative of owis, owem, and many white sheep. And we have the accusative plural here, owis albas. Uh, so if you look at, um, if I ask the question, what declension do pastor and owis belong to? They belong to the third declension, that third family of nouns, a brand new family. And all of the, this entire family has is, I-S, in the genitive singular. Owis, pastoris, all of the um, third declensions will have is at that point. What is the difference, though, between pastor and owis? Well, pastor, because it ends in a... Um, it ends in R, it it's a, ends in consonant, it's called a consonant stem, as opposed to owis, which is considered an I stem. And the only difference between the um, S ending nominatives and the consonant stems is that in the genitive plural, you see here we have oium in the genitive plural, and if we look on the next page here at the conjugation of, I mean the declension of pastor, we see that we have pastorum. So we have an um ending for pastor in the genitive plural, and we have an ium ending here in the genitive plural of owis. That's the only difference between those two. Uh, so the second thing I want to point out here is that you may have some difficulty at first identifying the genders of third declension nouns because, as I said, it does have uh, contains both masculine, feminine, and neuter all three uh, genders of nouns. So here are a few rules to take uh, to keep in mind when you're trying to identify the gender. First, pay attention to the adjectives that go with the, the nouns. So if you see una, here we have in line six, una owe, nigra. We have the ablative, we have the feminine form of una and nigra, which you recognize from before, and that can help you identify the gender, the feminine gender of owis. Um, so that's step one. Step two is there is a, an ending rule that nouns that end in error, er, r, or or, tend to be masculine. Nouns that end in socks, s, o, or x, tend to be feminine. And nouns that t end in lancet, l, a, n, c, e, or t, tend to be neuter. 
So that rule can help you to identify. Oh, and one other thing for neuters is if it ends in us in the nominative and ris, so us ris, uh, ris in the um, genitive, so us in the nominative, ris in the genitive, then it tends to be uh, neuter. Okay. Uh, one last rule, a third rule for genders is that things that tend that project from the earth, or things that have a projecting shape, like um, Mountains or hills, like colis or moons, tend to be masculine. And things that sink in, like a, a valley, wallis, tend to be feminine. And, um, but the one big exception to that is trees. All trees are feminine. Okay, another feature I want to point out here is in line 11. We have canis erbam non est. Okay, notice that this is est, non est. Uh, neque pastor herbam est, kibus pastores est, panis. Be sure to pronounce these things, these words, with the long and the short sounds. Here we have est and est. And the reason for that is that these are two different words, and the only difference is that long mark called a macron or macron. So here we have the dog does not eat grass. Canis herbam non est. And the shepherd does not eat grass. And then we have kibus pastores est panis. The food of a shepherd is bread. Okay, so here we have is. As, so distinguish between est and est. Est eats, est is. And here in the margin we say est eats and edunt, they eat. This is an irregular verb, so you need to look at both of these forms. Eats and they eat. Okay, next feature I want to point out is in line 25. That is, we have the preposition supra, which means above. And notice what case it takes, the accusative. So when you see supra, expect, here we have campum, the accusative. So sol in kylo est supra campum. The sun in the sky is above the field. Or the sun is in the sky, is above the field in the sky. So we have um, supra plus the accusative. Notice, though, that we have in line 30, sub, here, sub arbore autem umbra est, uh, but the shadow or shade is under the tree, or and the shade is under the tree. So sub arbore, what case does sub take? Sub takes the ablative when you're talking about a location, like he is under the tree. If you were saying that... Uh, using motion with sub, like he is going going under the tree or moving under the tree, then under sub would take the accusative. Accusative takes motion toward, and ablative takes motion away from. Ablative takes a location if you're at the thing. Or, um, and then also the locative does that. So let's look at um, the next feature in line 39. That is, uh, we have dum, dum pastor in erba dormit, ovis nigra, ab ovibus albis, abit et adorium curvit. So uh, one translation, there are two different translations of this temporal conjunction. Conjunction links two things together, right? And so a temporal conjunction is one that shows time, from tempus, time. So this temporal conjunction can be translated here, while, while the shepherd sleeps in the grass, the black sheep, goes away from the um, white sheep and uh, runs to the river or the stream. So there is one translation of doom, while. But we'll notice another one in line 69. If we go down here to 60, next page. Uh, we have, Ovis consistit at expectat doom lupus venit. So we have the sheep stops and waits. And we could translate this while the wolf comes, but a better translation here would be until. So doom can also mean until. So the sheep stops and waits until the wolf comes. Okay, let's look now at the next feature in line, back in line 55. And you'll notice here that we have um, the, uh, the word ipse. Ubi est lupus ipse. Ipse 
is a part of speech called a demonstrative pronoun. We've seen these before with like hik, hai, kok, and illa, illa, elud, pointing things out, saying like this one or that one. Here it's, it's an emphatic demonstrative pronoun, I mean like the very one or the one itself. So where is the wolf itself? Ipse, modifying lupus. And the way it declines is just like ille, uh, ille, illa, um, ille, where we had ille, illum, ilius. Here we have ipse, ipsum, ipsius. So it declines like ille. Um, the only difference is instead of an illud in the neuter, you get an, uh, it stays ipsum. Okay, look at line, uh, the next feature in line 65. And we have pastor says, Eke with stigia ovis, ubi est ovis ipsa, duc me ad eam canis. So we have this form here, um, duc, coming from ducera. So ducet, he leads, and ducunt, they lead. The accusative, I mean the imperative, mood of this verb is duc, and then the plural ducite. There are four very common verbs that do this, and the way to remember those is, is with the, um, is dic duc facfer, dic duc facfer, which means, uh, uh, dic is tell me, uh, duc, here we have lead, lead me to her, the sheep dog, and then uh, fac, do it, and fair, uh, bear or carry. Dic duc fac fair. You should learn those as the short imperatives. The last feature I want to point out is in line 75. And that is uh, what happens to odd, the uh, preposition to, when you combine it with a verb to form a compound. And so here we have um, said, ecce canis ac curit. And we see in the margin that ac curit is actually odd plus curit, meaning he runs to, but the odd changes to ac. Okay, this is uh, called assimilation. It's where the consonant blends together with the, the next consonant, uh, because if you were to say ad curit, kind of quickly, ad curit, ad curit, with the D, it begins to blend in with the C sound. Ad curit, ad curit becomes ad curit. And that's called assimilation, and you should know when you see a verb like this that um, it helps you to remember the meaning if you know that ad is the actual preposition that's going with this. So those are all the features I wanted to point out in Chapter 9.